いいよおいおいおい Hi, today is everything about kimono and footwear, how to style, how to walk, where to buy. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. I have asked you in my Instagram what do you want to know about kimono and footwear and it was pretty much the whole thing, so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Of course, first of all, I want to talk about traditional footwear, which are so called geta and zori. For a foregna, they often look a little like flip flops, but <laughs> they're way safer and way much easier to walk in. And in my opinion, way much more comfortable to wear. The difference between geta and zori is also a difference that even most Japanese can't tell. So this is a knowledge you can definitely break with. Geta and zori. Geta are usually wooden sandals. This part of the sole is usually made of wood. It can be painted like this one, but it can also be that's just untreated wood. Zori on the other side usually have a core and they usually glue some fabric or um, leather on that core and then it will look like this. The core nowadays is usually made of cork. Keep in mind that geta are more like sneakers, which means this is what you would wear for a normal casual outfit and this is nothing for something casual. Zori on the other side can be casual, can be formal. These zori, by the way, are nothing I would wear for a formal occasion. I would go um, more with gold or silver or white zori for something formal like weddings. Anyway, also geta and zori are apparently something different like sneakers and high heels are. They usually have some kind of the same shape and they also share the same terminology. Um, the bottom part is called dai and those straps on the top is called hanao and those hanao have this strap in the middle you will be put between your toes and this strap is called mai tsubo. Please remember this because I'm going to use this terminology in this video from now on because it makes it easier to define what I am talking about. The shape of Hano actually never changed. They always look the same, but the shape of the die can be totally, totally different. There are so many different shapes out there and also different heights and you can choose one that you really like. By the way, this is my favorite height and my favorite shape of Zodi and Geta. So you can see me wearing this a lot and it's probably also the only thing I own. Another big difference between Zodi and Geta are the shape of the soles. And there are very, very many different shapes of soles for Geta. There are a lot of getter with a flat soles. I think that's what you see um, nowadays a lot because they're very easy to walk in like Zori because it's just a flat sole you can walk in. But I think very famous are Niheima Geta and I think they can be pretty challenging to walk in. But first let me show you how to walk in your getter and Zori. When putting on your geta or zori, don't let the maitsubu hit your foot. Usually I keep the maitsubu one centimeter from my foot and hold it there between my toes, which you can hopefully see here. And now I'm going to tell you the ultimate secret when walking in geta. Just walk. There is no special trick or way to walk. You might feel a little limited when it's your first time, but have you ever walked in a very long dress or skirt? That's not very easy either. This takes a little practice and time, but I want you to keep in mind that you should walk as you usually do. Komageta or Nihaimageta usually take a little attention. Lose the fear to have the front crushing the street because that is how it's meant to be. 
When you walk with this in mind, you will find out that your way to walk will become more natural. By the way, pairing Western footwear like sneakers, high heels or boots with your kimono is definitely no taboo. But there will be some Japanese, probably elder Japanese, looking at you like, how can you dare? Or they will come over to you and say, um, yeah, you should wear a sori with your kimono. Although pairing non-traditional footwear with your kimono is something that started in Meiji era, which is the end of the 19th century. I have very sensitive feet and I usually always wear socks. Um, so geta in summer are a problem for me because I just don't like how it feels when I put them on. Um, I like sandals a little more. So in summer I wear 50% of my outfits with sandals and 50% of my outfits with geta because I kind of also get used to it and I love geta a lot. Um, but sandals are just more comfortable for my taste. That's something that's totally up to you. I also wear a lot of um, sneakers, especially on rainy days or in winter. We once had a shooting in winter and it was just too slippery for Sori. So I definitely went with my sneakers out there and I love the pictures and there were so less people actually noticed that I was wearing usual winter sneakers. And for parties, I love to wear high heels or um, higher boots. But for me, this is a very, very nice style and it really um, gives you this kimono. It's more like a dress look, which I really adore. When you combine sneakers, high heels or sandals with your yukata or kimono, make sure to wear the hem, the suso, much shorter than you would usually do. This will make it so much easier to walk in and also your shoes will become a real eye catcher. So there is nothing that should hold you back when you want to wear normal shoes with your kimono when you want to. And I think it is also a big step that helps you for introducing kimono more and more into your daily life. In a lot of comments, you ask me where I purchase my geta and sori and how I maintain them or take care of them. And the answer is very easy because I go to experts which are footwear stores in japanese they are called hakimono ya um, this is a luxury i can do because i live in japan when you don't live here you of course have to rely on the internet i'm going to introduce my favorite uh, sori store or brand to you that is a little more pricey but when it comes to quality and comfort, I can assure you, you will be fine with those for a very, very long time. And I want to emphasize here that this video is not sponsored. I just um, really like my Sodi I purchased from them. Um, this is the box you get them in. And um, the brand is called Karen. Blosso and I will link um, their homepage down below. I think they only have Japanese. I hope they will have English in the near future. I will send them this video to force them <laughs> to make an English um, homepage because they really, really make um, nice stuff. I purchased um, this Sori and they're pretty, pretty <laughs> dirty already. You can tell I wear them a lot and they are made of this cushion and they are super soft and super easy to walk in. They are also very good for rainy days. They cut off this part of the heel. So when you walk, um, the water on the streets won't um, splash onto your kimono. Um, which is very, very cool, by the way. And um, I really enjoy this Sori a lot. I love the Hanao. <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, so when you look for good zori and you want to be sure that you can wear them for a long time, a very long time, and you are willing to pay a little more for it because you're going to wear them a long time, I definitely do recommend Cardin Blosso. Cardin Blosso isn't really on the expensive side. It is something what Geta and Sodi in Japan cost. So when you are here in Japan and you're looking for something really nice, this is what good Sodi costs. And you should also think about how many people work behind such footwear. There are people who make the Hanao, there are people who make the Dai, and then you have the footwear stores, Hakimonoya, they put Hanao and Dai together and make it fitted to your feet. And they also maintain your Geta and Sodi if something is wrong with them. For example, one problem for um, Geta and Sori when you wear them a lot, um, the Hanao will get very loose because they're just uh, tied onto the Dai. And um, when I feel, oh, it's getting harder to walk, or when they are too loose, your feet will hurt in instantly when you wear them for like 30 minutes and try to walk in them. So this is when I go to a footwear store and say, hey, could you please um, fix um, the Hana for me, make it a little tighter again so it's easier for me to walk. Another thing is Hana is something you can have forever. So if you really, really fall in love with Hana and your dye, um, usually because it's something you walk in, um, that's nothing that will maintain forever and ever. And usually in old Japan, um, when they wore get every day, especially wood, we all know it, wood will become smaller when you walk in it. So they had um, the dye changed and they were using the Hanao for a very long time or probably even for their whole lives. And I have just mentioned it, when you go to a Hakimonoya, they usually have dye and Hano separately and you look for a dye you really like or a Hano you really like and then you match them together. And they also change um, the Maitsubo for you into a color you really like or a color you find more matching. And then I put everything together and also fit it to your feet. So it will be more comfortable to wear those. There is also a difference between Zodi that are made for rainy days because especially Zodi tend to get moldy a lot. So be careful and don't wear them on rainy days. If you don't have Ama Zodi, which are Zodi for rainy days, you should probably switch to sneakers. The difference between Ama Zodi and Zodi is pretty easy. You can see where um, the straps are fixed onto the die. And this is usually where um, water gets in and where Zodi start to get very, very moldy. With Ama Zodi, especially these are cut in Brussels. Oh my God, they are just so, so dirty. I'm so sorry. You can see that um, the part where the strap is fixed onto the die is totally covered. And you can see barely on top where it is opened. Um, so this is something you could wear for rainy days. These are probably so you really, really shouldn't wear on rainy days. When you want to take care of your Geta and Zodi, make sure to air them from time to time when you don't wear them a lot. Put them into the sun to get rid of mold because they really get moldy very, very easily. Zodi, I usually have um, a silk cover or a leather cover. This is something you shouldn't really wash. Um, I have to be honest with you. There is sometimes no way to get rid of stains. This is a good thing about Geta. Geta is something you can just wipe. And it's also said that Geta are also good for rainy days. So Geta are usually not that hard to care than your Zodi. So Zodi is something you should really look at very, very carefully. In the end, I want to give you my very last piece of advice that will help you when you purchase Kimono and Geta online. Before that, make sure that you have subscribed if you haven't yet and you want to stick around a little more on this channel. Ask questions in the comments. 
Send me requests about future videos or share your knowledge about more hakimono you really love or share, for example, an online store you had really, really good experiences with. I'm pretty sure a lot of people on this channel would be very, very happy if you share more of your experiences. When you have Geta purchased online and they really, really hurt on the front, it helps when you pull out the tsubo a little and this will widen it up a little more and doesn't make it uh, too tight here anymore and um, then it's probably easier to walk in that. And I talk to you in my video next week. Bye!